When discussing osteochondrosis, we refer to disorders that affect bones and cartilages associated with growth. Therefore, osteochondrosis primarily impacts children and adolescents. The central aspect of osteochondrosis is that the blood supply to the growing bone is disrupted, leading to the death of bone cells and temporarily halting the growth of the affected bone. Eventually, regeneration and repair occur. The precise cause of osteochondrosis remains unknown, but it is thought that genetics play a role in some cases. Nutrition, repetitive movement, and trauma also contribute to its development. The knee is most commonly affected by osteochondrosis, with Osgood Schlatter disease being considered the most prevalent form of this condition. However, the hip, ankle, elbows, shoulders, and spine can also be involved. Osteochondrosis typically affects individuals aged between 8 to 15 years. The five most common symptoms of osteochondrosis are pain, typically perceived as joint pain, worsens with activity and improves with rest, swelling of the joint, which is tender to the touch, stiffness, making the joint difficult to move due to stiffness, joint catching or locking, a more severe form of stiffness, where it feels like there is a sudden complete blockage of movement in the joint, leaving the person stuck in a specific position and unable to move further. Weakness in the affected area, whether an arm or leg, leading to a sensation of weakness. In severe cases, osteochondrosis can cause deformities or discrepancies in limb length. Diagnosis is typically made based on symptoms and imaging tests like X-rays and MRI. X-rays may not detect osteochondrosis in its early stages, but in advanced stages, they can visualize increased density, sclerosis, fragmentation, and alterations in bone growth patterns. Osteochondrosis and osteochondritis share many similarities, making it difficult to draw a clear distinction between them due to similar causes, symptoms, and locations. While osteochondrosis affects larger bones and joints, osteochondritis is more localized. A core difference is that, in osteochondritis, a segment of bone and cartilage becomes separated from the surrounding tissue due to a lack of blood supply. Furthermore, Osteochondritis is more inflammatory in nature, whereas osteochondrosis still involves inflammation but to a lesser extent. Both conditions affect the same age group, though osteochondritis can also affect older adults. Therefore, in the medical community, these terms are often used interchangeably despite minor differences. The treatment of osteochondrosis centers on rest and avoiding additional stress on the affected joints. Rest is the first and most crucial part of management. For pain management, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, are commonly used. Ibuprofen is the most frequently utilized and said due to its effectiveness and availability. Naproxen, known for its longer duration of action, is also a common choice. Topical diclofenac, available as a gel form like Voltaren gel, is particularly useful for its local effect, minimizing systemic side effects. Selexib is favored for individuals who may be at risk of gastrointestinal issues, as it is associated with fewer gastrointestinal side effects compared to other NSAIDs. Indomethacin, while stronger, carries a higher risk of side effects and is generally used with more caution. Initially, Ibuprofen and naproxen are the preferred treatments due to their efficacy and safety profile. Mild exercises are beneficial for strengthening muscles and improving blood circulation, which can aid in the recovery process. In some cases, the use of braces, casts, or orthotic devices may be recommended to provide support and reduce stress on the affected area, helping to manage symptoms and prevent further injury. Corticosteroid injections represent a second-line treatment option due to their potential side effects and should only be used short-term. These injections can be effective for reducing inflammation and pain, but are generally reserved for more severe cases, or when initial treatments have not provided sufficient relief. Surgery may be necessary in severe cases of osteochondrosis, 
particularly when conservative treatments have failed to produce the desired outcomes. The decision to proceed with surgery is based on the specific type and severity of the condition, as well as the lesion's location and impact on the patient's quality of life. The prognosis for osteochondrosis is generally good, especially if the condition is treated early. However, outcomes can vary depending on the specific type of osteochondrosis and the extent of the lesion. Prevention plays a critical role in managing osteochondrosis. Regular physical activity supports normal bone development and can help prevent the condition, but it is important to avoid repetitive traumas that could exacerbate the issue. The use of protective gear during sports activities is also recommended to help protect the body from injury and reduce the risk of developing osteochondrosis.